Hey everybody, how are you today? So today we're going to continue talking about chapter 2, section 2. And in this section we're really focusing on cultural variation. And we're getting at that not everybody gets along inside of a culture. Uh, we're also focusing on what makes cultures unique. You know, how are they similar? How are they different to other cultures across the globe? How does globalization and kind of interconnectedness of life change things? So we're continuing to look at kind of some of these different things. And today, I want you to think about an immigrant. And if an immigrant chooses to, for example, move to America, they're going to come here permanently. Are they going to assimilate? Are they going to mix in, blend in with the other different groups that live here in the U.S.? Are they going to start loving apple pie and eating hot dogs and watching baseball games? Is America truly a melting pot, a society where our cultures kind of all blend together and we all have the same traditional values and ideas and beliefs? Or do people hold on to some of their own languages and values and cultural norms? And so is America more of a salad bowl where, yes, there are things that unite the American people in terms of holidays like 4th of July, but do people refuse to assimilate or to mix in? Do people hold on to some of their, you know, elements of their own cultural society and values from their original home country? So is America more of that tossed salad? <clears throat> so looking at the two objects here, you've got the, the melting pot, so to speak, versus the salad. And in the melting pot idea, it's as if, you know, you're melting chocolate or if you're, I don't know, melting a bunch of crayons, whatever it is that you're melting. But over time, you know, as people live here longer and longer, they no longer identify perhaps as a Chinese or Irish or Italian or Mexican or Russian American. You know, perhaps they don't speak that language anymore or, you know, practice some of the, the cultural traditions that they had in their home country or follow those same cultural norms. They've assimilated. They are now similar to the rest of the American people and they follow the mainstream values and cultural norms of our society. So it's one big unified culture or it's a melting pot. And though you can see that here as I keep talking about assimilation, the idea that, you know, people have really blended together and perhaps they no longer speak Russian or Polish. Perhaps they no longer eat those traditional foods or celebrate those different holidays of their home country. Perhaps now, you know, they celebrate 4th of July and eat apple pie and go to baseball games or whatever you can identify as those mainstream American values. Now, on the opposite end of things, though, there is a thought process that perhaps people don't really blend into American society. Perhaps American society isn't just one big happy family where everybody thing is just mixed together, assimilated. Uh, perhaps it's not that melting pot of values where we all just get along. Perhaps America is more of a tossed salad. And the reason we call it a tossed salad is if you look at the salad there, you can clearly identify that there's tomatoes and there's green peppers and there might be broccoli in there or radishes or carrots or, you know, if there's cheese or, you know, I don't know, cucumbers, croutons, whatever it may be. But what unites the salad altogether is the salad dressing. It's kind of all tossed together to have some kind of sense of unity or connection, but then there's still different parts that are easy to identify. So what sociologists are saying is that when some immigrants come to America, they forget about their home life, they assimilate, they blend in with the rest of American society, and we're just one big old melting pot, and we all kind of get along. Other sociologists say, no, we're not a melting pot. We all don't get along, and it's not that everybody is just the same now. In fact, you can still see communities, like if you go to Chicago, you can go to Chinatown. It is a separate subculture where people speak Mandarin and they eat Chinese food and they, you know, practice cultural traditions and values and norms from their home country. Same thing if you go to Chicago and you can see a little Italian village or a little Ukrainian village or Polish neighborhoods. There's places where people continue to practice their own cultural traditions from their home country. And so... Yes, they're happy to be in America. They love Americans. They speak English. They, you know, are very proud of being here. They would never want to leave, but they're still retaining that part of their identity and their part of their ethnic heritage. So it's something called cultural pluralism, the idea that many cultures can coexist within a society 
and maintain their cultural differences and kind of all get along. And so what unites us together is our, our love of Uncle Sam and of the flag and perhaps baseball and apple pie and hot dogs and things of that nature. However, you know, people still have their own traditions that make them unique for their home country and they're not going to give those up because they love that aspect of who they are and their relatives they still have at home. So there's things that unite us together, but we're still perhaps not as closely connected as you think. And so this brings us to the concept of subcultures. And if you are doing the extra credit for this week, the Crash Course video talks about subcultures and countercultures as well. And don't forget to get that done this week by midnight. You've also got to get the norms worksheet done this week uh, and get your quiz done as well on class marker. So a subculture is a specific or distinct group that is part of a culture society. And they have some of the sh shared values and norms and behaviors um, of the population, but they might have some of their own distinct languages and values and views which are different. There are, you know, different subcultures that are linked together because of age or ethnicity or religion that kind of define who they are. So there's so many different subcultures out there. There are subcultures where people play Dungeons and Dragons and they play other role-playing games. There are subcultures like hipsters or people that follow goth or the emo. There's subcultures where people are into furries. There's subcultures where people listen to certain, you know, music or they're into trains. There's subcultures where people, you know, follow different religions, whether they are Catholic or Methodist. Um, a subculture could be, you know, kids attending, you know, Maplelets or FFA, you know, different conferences or activities or sports that they're in. So, and also cults, which is why we're talking about cults this week. People who decide to join a cult are in a specific subculture. And these people all are part of the mainstream culture and that group society, and they follow most of the values and societal norms, but they also have some unique ones that define them together that are either based off their interests, their hobbies, their ethnic background, their religion, goals they have for society, something. And then there is a specific type of subculture, and they reject the mainstream values of the larger group and they would like to replace those with a new set of values and norms. So for example, the mafia is, you know, a type of subculture. The mafia is not as prevalent today. We don't see as much organized crime like we used to, at least not around here, perhaps in like New York City or Chicago. And they're an example of a group, especially during the 1920s, during Prohibition, where they were trying to make and sell alcohol illegally and they were circumventing the laws and trying to replace them. You look at the 1960s, you look at the hippie movement. That was a subculture, right? The people who believed in free love and peace. They were against the Vietnam War. Uh, they were against, you know, the treatment of African Americans. And they wanted to change what was happening in America by corrupt politicians to end our involvement in the war, to get better treatment for African Americans, free love. And so that was definitely the hippies were a counterculture. You know, as far as the civil rights movement, that was a counterculture. They were rejecting and trying to replace that. Now, you could make the argument that the civil rights movement, especially, you know, the movement led by Martin Luther King Jr. being nonviolent, perhaps was more of a subculture rather than a counterculture. Uh, but any of the violent acts perhaps would go into the counterculture group. Uh, the protests during 2020 led by Black Lives Matter, that is definitely a subculture. Uh, some would push that into the counterculture group because it's those protests have turned violent, um, you know, in response to trying to bring about cultural change. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little bit more about cults. So I've got a couple of video clips for you to watch to learn a little bit more about this subculture and why people would join a cult and some of the famous cults in history. And you'll have got a journal to do with that. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time working on our project. So make sure if you haven't started yet, you pick a topic for the project. And then you start working on your project since we've got a check-in for that at the end of next week. That's it for now, guys. Have a great day. Later.